Hey, what's going on everybody? Longbox Love Affair here with a free comic book day edition video. Uh, this is being filmed a couple days after free comic book day 2024. And I had a chance to hit up a couple shops. It was a dreary day. Uh, I went to Third Eye Comics in Annapolis and To Be Continued Comics in Crofton, both in Maryland. So I'm going to show off some of the books I picked up. Not a huge haul, but a pretty good haul. And it's not just because of these free comic books that I picked up. And I picked up the obligatory, you know, the Spider-Man and the Marvel. I'm not looking forward to Blood Hunt. I'll be honest, I'm not collecting that. But there was a free comic book day edition of that. Picked up a couple, cop, couple copies of TMNT. I still need to pick up 150, issue number 150. Uh, this uh, Worlds of Tinian is, is exciting to, to read into. I haven't read any of these. Um, I was a big Something is Killing the Children fan. I stopped collecting that. I pulled that off my pull list. So I'm curious to dive into this and see if there's any hint of where that series is currently. A book that I'm hoping doesn't disappoint, but I'm not optimistic, is this Absolute Power, the DC one. I have not been a fan of DC Comics lately. Maybe some of you can change my mind and tell me if there's a series that I should be reading. But DC has just not been hitting it for me. But also... Blood Hunt. I have no interest in reading this. I don't know why. I'm a big horror movie fan. I like vampires. I don't like vampires in comic books. So uh, we'll see. So I got a whole bunch of things to read. Maybe these will change my mind. Maybe these will get me excited. For instance, a couple years ago when Jason Aaron was starting on Avengers and he did that whole futuristic uh, Avengers Tower, um, uh, what was it? Um, the, the, that series he ran uh, in Avengers, uh, the, the separate one as well as the ongoing. And I was into it. It got me back into Avengers. So maybe that'll happen here with Free Comic Book Day, which is really the point. And I picked up a bunch for my niece and nephew who are four and seven respectively. So um, some uh, Encanto and some other uh, books that they might be interested in. So let's get to the meat of, of the haul. So uh, free comic book day, I had an early bird pass from Third Eye Comics. So they opened at nine o'clock. I got in at 8.30 and frankly, I didn't find much. So they, I thought they were gonna have their big tent sale and they didn't. And so if anyone's watching that goes to Third Eye and knows about their scheduling, let me know when that tent sale usually happens. Cause I thought last year it was on free comic book day and it was really good for me. Uh, this year it was just a, a long section of, of, uh, uh, long boxes. I did find a bunch of books that I thought were five dollars. They ended up being a dollar. I should have picked up more uh, and there were things I passed because I thought they were more money than they probably were. So I picked up this variant cover to X-Men 9, Chris Bacallo. I'm a big Chris Bacallo fan. I've actually never seen this variant cover. I have other iterations of this variant cover when he did it uh, for another run in X-Men. So uh, I'm happy to, to bring this one into the collection. Uh, and then similar also, Chris Bacallo is an Uncanny X-Force 13, a variant cover. I've seen this on the wall. They had it originally at $12.99. Picked this up for a buck. So, uh, you know, not bad at all. I got a couple variations of Wolverine on the cover. I love this X-Force run. So, there you go. And then last but not least, I picked up a second copy of X-Men 20. Uh, it's funny that they had it. They were trying to sell this for $9.99. I don't think it's worth $9.99. Uh, but it is that awesome Mike Del Mundo cover with Mystique as she's photocopying her various faces. So I picked those up along with the free comic books and I went on my way. And then uh, my friend Martin and I, uh, we teamed up when we were at Third Eye and then we decided to go to To Be Continued Comics, which is actually on my way home. Uh, and it's in Crofton, Maryland. To Be Continued is probably my go-to locally for all silver, bronze, back issues. They have lots of different stuff. They have their main store, which is compact, and they have a lot of back issues there. It's probably the back issue place in the DC metro area. Uh, they also have an upstairs that is a lot of dollar books or one to three dollar books that you can hunt. I did not go upstairs this time because I knew if I went up there, I'd be stuck for three hours hunting, and I didn't have that time. And so downstairs, they had a great deal. They had like 60% off their um, modern books, if I'm not mistaken, and 30% off the wall books, which included a lot of great silver keys. So in the bins, I found a couple that uh, I just like to pick up. And I mean, originally this was four bucks. This is a Silver Surfer 82. I got the 60% off discount. First Tyrant, really cool Ron Lim cover. 
I've had this book various times and, and sold it, but this is one that I'll probably end up keeping and holding on to. The market sucks right now, so I'm not selling much at all. I'm really just collecting things that I love, uh, artists, characters. Silver Surfer is both the artist and the character, Ron Lim here. So a uh, really cool Silver Surfer book. Another Silver Surfer in the same bin was Silver Surfer 52, the first appearance of that uh, villain Ben... Ben Lar or whatever his name is, uh, that was in Captain Marvel. Uh, I mean, for next to nothing, I picked this up. It was originally three bucks, but then it was a discount. And I, I think he gave me a deal. He threw this in and with the others because this is a nothing book compared to what I just what else I bought, and you'll see that in a second. So uh, I didn't pick this up for any of the spec because I think the spec is dead. Uh, Captain Marvel's uh, number two, the movie, did not do well. And that character, uh, they gender swapped, I believe. And that is the villain in the Captain Marvel movie. That's not my motivation to get this. But I was picking up some of the uh, early, um, early to mid Silver Surfer Ron Lim books. All right. Next book I saw in the bins I knew I had to pick up. And there are, okay, I should say this, there are two amazing Spider-Man books, actually three, that are on my list. And they're on my list because I need upgrades. And uh, the, the books I have, uh, I, when I w went through them again after completing my whole set of amazing Spider-Man, one through six or 700, whatever that number is, uh, whenever I completed that, I, I looked back and there were a few that were just beat. And one of them that was beat, uh, is this amazing Spider Spider-Man 95. This is a much nicer copy. It was originally in the bins for 75, I think, and then there was like a 30% discount. Uh, so that was a pretty decent deal, I thought. It's not a key, which is one of the reasons why I haven't picked it up lately. But when I saw it for nice condition and for a good discount, I was like, okay, I'll pick that up. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so th that, that was exciting. So I don't have to hunt this book anymore. Uh, I have a much nicer copy in this one. The other book that I found, and it was on the wall behind the counter, was this one. And this is another one that was on my beat list that I needed, needed an upgrade. Amazing Spider-Man 13. Pick this up on free comic book day. Not free, that is for sure. Uh, but really nice copy. I mean, you got, is that Jarvis there? No, that's not true. That's a psychiatrist. <laughs> uh, you got Mysterio's first appearance. The only real problems with this book are there's a tear right here, just there. And then some of the back cover, some of the front cover is stapled onto the back. It's not a, it's not a stapling error. It's more of a fold error. Um, I'm not worried about that. The cover is crisp, it looks clean, it is not too faded, because it is a white cover. And this is from the early to mid 60s. So to get uh, Amazing Spider-Man 13 in the first year, year and a half of the run, uh, a really nice presentable copy is great, because the one I have is probably falling apart. I can't remember exactly the condition, but it was enough to put it on my list. So this and this scratched an itch. There is one more book on the Amazing Spider-Man Silver side that I need and have been hunting casually. And that book is Amazing Spider-Man 3. I'm looking for a really nice copy, prob well, really nice uh, for me, probably a 2.5 or higher, preferably graded. The one I have, I bought for like $150 back in the day. Uh, I actually remember I bought it on New Year's Day. I, I, I was out of town. I found a Craigslist ad about five, six years ago, and uh, the person came to my hotel, and, and I looked through it and bought it. Uh, so it is got cut-ups in it. Uh, and I don't think the cuts, uh, the, the, like someone cut out ads and stuff, I don't think it affects the story. It's not one I will ever get graded, but I would like a complete copy, no cutouts, but it's what I could afford at the time and it was, the opportunity presented itself. I could probably sell that and make more money than what I paid, but I'm holding on to that book. I, it's a seminal first appearance, Stock Ock, uh, and, and it would be great to get a, a higher grade copy of that. Um, so, so there's that. But other than that, I have a new first appearance of Mysterio in my arsenal. So 
That was my free comic book day haul. I hope you all enjoyed your own free comic book days wherever you are. Hopefully the issues were there that you were seeking. Uh, hopefully you found some good deals. Let me know if you found any good deals down in the, down in the comment section. Love to know what you picked up if you found any um, diamonds in the rough. But uh, thanks again and stay tuned for more videos. Comment down below, hit that thumbs up, and of course, subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.